So for this OA joint that we have here, we are going to have the occipital condyle moving on the atlas right here. So let's start off with some osteokinematics. So this is going to be flexion, this is going to be extension, this is going to be uh, right side bending, and this is going to be um, right rotation. Remember right rotation because if I bring my right hand back, that's going to be right hand rotate. That's going to be right rotation. If I bring my left hand back, it's going to be left rotation. So, let's look at the arthrokinematics. So, you can see here, the occipital condyle is going to be a concavity, convexity, convexity. So that means. For the convex rule, we're going to have our rolls and glides in the opposite direction. So if we do flexion, we're going to have a anterior roll with a posterior glide. Then with extension, you're going to have a posterior roll with a anterior glide. Then with right side bending at this right facet, we are going to have a right roll with a left glide and then with right rotation it's going to be a little bit weird because um instead of doing a roll and a glide it's actually going to be a modified spin because the axis of rotation goes through the dens right there so it's gonna actually be a modified spin so that means that our um that our right facet is only going to do a posterior glide. So for upper cervical um, coupling patterns, we're going to see that it, couple, that it couples to the opposite side. So if I were to do right side bending and then look to the same side to the right, and notice I'm just tilting the crown of my head, I'm not going to be able to move quite as well. But then if I do a right side bend and a left rotation to the opposite side, then I'm going to have a lot more range of motion. And the reason for that is going to be the alar ligament. The alar ligament is going to be a ligament that goes from the dens to these two condyles right here. And I'm only going to be able to show you one because I only have so many hands, but if you remember with that right side bending like that and then we weren't able to um, rotate as much back um, to the right to the same side but then when we did right side bending and went to the opposite side we were able to do more and that's because um, there was a laxity in that band of ligament. So you can see when we do right right side bending, it gets tensioned. I think it's tensioned even more, which stops the range of motion for the same side, but then for opposite side, it comes together and that allows for more range of motion. But this can also cause movement. So if we look at the AA joint, we could put that ligament on the left here to show that left alar ligament. And then if I want to create a right side bend, for instance, I would actually look to my left. So I look to my left, my head is, head is going to melt naturally tilt tilt so that's because if I do a left rotation this alar ligament on the other side is going to tension and that's going to bring the head downward so when we do rotation hopefully you'll be able to see in there that when I do a rotation, it becomes taut, and that's going to cause uh, opposite side side bending.